Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It is October 16th. Hill the Franco Show react. Uh, sniper wolf doxing scandal. Uh, Israeli Hamas war update. More updates? Okay, anyway. Yeah, no, I didn't do uh, Thursdays. It's just I, I could not get to it um, in time to get it on for Friday, so I just skipped that one. And also, I, I did look at it on myself and there wasn't too terribly much to react to anyway so it wasn't too much of a loss um but remember to like follow subscribe all that fun stuff because it powers the wand that is broken that should be in my hands right now to help pause everything like that because all likes and subscribes power it i need to get it fixed anyway we're gonna get into it let's see what the shenanigans is today today we're talking about this sniper wolf doxing scandal though she says she's the actual victim we've got troubling updates on hamas and israel with poland's hugely consequential election just exposed you also break down the clown show that was the dylan danis logan paul fight and why many are now pushing for race to be removed from the census we're talking about all that and so much more on today's brand new philip defranco show you daily Doxing is fucked up. Why would people do that? I don't understand that. And for if I didn't, I didn't read the full. There's a little tweet that was inside of it. Um, I didn't read the full thing there. But of course, someone's going to say, "Oh, it wasn't me. I was actually the." Because it's of course they're. Because if you're the bad person, people are going to be like, "Hey, bad on you." But if you're like, "No, it wasn't actually me. I'm the actual victim here. I was defending myself," then people will be like, "All right, cool, yay." Uh, and then another thing was. Shit balls. Um, the last thing, the last, the last thing I wanted to talk about there. Oh, racism isn't real. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. There we go. Let's go there. Yeah, race isn't real. It is a social construct. Um, it is ethnicity and it is species. Um, we don't have. Yeah, race is a made-up thing that humans created. Eighteen uh, hundreds. Something like that, I think it was. Um, but yeah, no, they race isn't actually real. So when people are like, oh, I'm this race, it's like, no, 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 there's ethnicity and there's this. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know why race is still a thing around for nowadays. Anyway, we're going to get into it. We're so talking about all that and so much more on today's brand new Philip DeFranco show. You daily dive into the news. But first, I got to let you know that the October Beautiful Bastard Drop is now live. Click the link Yay! in the description. Use the QR code. Type it out. Because as promised, it is our biggest and best drop yet. So we've got new shirts, hoodies, zip up. Those designs hoodies, are actually really cool. A lot of his designs pops, are like hats, really, really denim nice. Denim jackets, a pin set. And we've got new oh. and old lines. Rare staples like emotionally yeah. exhausted. Keep going. One day we'll all these skeletons cool. schools just want to have fun but also completely new stuff like as above so below and everyone else is a villain in someone else's story and then just some clean looks like our black denim jacket so go get in on any and all kind of weird it's amazing everything else was like all bright and stuff like that and then just denim you can help just the show but with that now said we got a lot of news to break down today so let's just jump into it starting with this sniper wolf situation is disgusting it is reckless it is dangerous and we have to talk about it right and if you don't know sniper wolf is an absolutely massive youtuber hundreds and hundreds of millions of views each month she's best known for her cosplay and her react content and that specific content react. has gotten a lot of heat over the last few months with a lot of people saying the react content it, it's not transformative she's just stealing and siphoning content from other people and benefiting from it and among her many critics one of her biggest ones is a creator by the name of jack's film he's an old school youtuber i think he's been on the platform for like 17 years and over the past few months he's really highlighted this problem and with that he's made a ton of videos criticizing sniper wolf for her reaction videos both making fun of her but also at the same time giving credit to the content that she is reacting to but then over the weekend it escalated from just some internet thing to the real world. With her posting an Instagram oh, story God. with a poll saying, should I visit Jack's films? He lives five minutes away from my shoot. And as it turns out, she wasn't joking because she ended up posting from outside his house saying, let's talk like adults, Jack's films. And in that, showing the exterior of his home. But of course, in this video, what we have to blur fuck? it out because we're not psychopaths. Now she ended up deleting those posts after getting backlash, but Jack's films went to Twitter to write, Sniper Wolf just doxed me on her Instagram. Creepy, gross, violating. What you do is disgusting. You steal content and stalk YouTubers. YouTube demonstrates monetizes dangerous quote creator or just get her off your platform she posted an instagram story right outside her home and deleted it in what universe do you think that's okay in what reality do you live in where you think this behavior is justified she's no longer a quote silly creator that steals content tee -hee. she's a creep that stalks and threats that okay if she has multi oh my god oh my god why so one question i have there's a lot of this this is a question that's been bothering me for a while. When these people are like, hey, I got dogs. This person found out I live X place. Why aren't these ones that are growing in popularity using like VPN to try to mitigate that? I know I know it's not a um, 
like a permanent fix and stuff like that, but it should still at least make it a little bit harder. Um, and that's also why you never use your real name on the internet. You always use a moniker. That is why no one's pretty much ever going to know what my real name is other than a res. Which, actually, to be fair, more people know me as a res than um, what my actual name is. So that's interesting. But anyway, back onto the Jax films here. Man, that's... Hopefully, there's not too many crazy people out there that are going to be like sh like on Sniper Wolf's sign and then go and start harassing them and stuff like that. Fuck, man. God, Friends hundreds of millions. Oh, now, fuck that. Time to get her off YouTube. Then sniper. All right. Apparently, I have to have a talk with Daryl there. Um, my apologies. My camera froze there for a bit. Um, for recording this. Uh, I don't know where when it ended, so I'm just going to continue on this. Um... Accusing of doxing, that, for what I know, that is literally what doxing is, is, like, finding that, like, I doubt he actually posted his address, and if it, if it wasn't something, like, he put into, this would be really weird for him if he did, put it into a video, and then did that, and she actually had to go and search up and go through a few, like, sites and stuff like that, that is definitely her finding stuff out and going to dox him, and that is just fucked up, setting, threatening him, and, she did essentially. Well, how does how is he supposed to know, right? She's like, "Hey, let's settle this like adults." Well, that's usually you know fighting words there. But also, she just posted to her. I'm assuming at least like tens of millions of followers. Any one of those people could be like, "Oh my God, Sniper Wolf!" And then like go to this guy and like, "You bastard! You're mean to Sniper Wolf." Um, so that's fucked up. Uh, she is yeah, uh, and to go with the whole react when I am, um, when Franco said that she does react, I've seen a couple of, actually I think it is Jack's film stuff, where she doesn't react at all. She's just kind of like, oh my goodness! And then just reads off whatever caption is um, on there. And then, I think even a couple of them blurred out the names of the creator so they didn't, so they couldn't get traffic and stuff like that, which is really fucked up. At least, you know, for this react that I'm doing to DeFranco, it is a news story, and he usually asks, hey, what's your opinion? And it's like, well, hey, it's easier to, you know, do these, and it's just type everything out, because you lose all context on typing and stuff like that. And also, oh my god, what the fuck is wrong with her? The doc, and adding, he literally posted his address on Google and said, I threatened him and doxed him. And adding, this creep has been harassing me for months, then plays victim saying I threatened him when I just wanted to talk to him. I have no ill intention. She also posted a video saying... Now, I don't know what's going on between the two of them, right? I just know the fact that he makes the whole anti-react to her, whatever. The videos of her not reacting to stuff and like seeing the con and stuff like that. I don't know. Other than that, I don't know. Um, I know that she was supposed to be a big creator back in the day, but I haven't really heard anything much from her recently and stuff like that. So I don't really know much about this stuff. But from what is going on here, all he's been doing is calling you out on bullshit. That's not harassing. He's just saying, hey, look, like, she's full of shit. We should not, like, she doesn't deserve all these people, everything like that. That's not harassment. That's calling you out on something you fucked up. Um, so, no, that's just, fuck. His victim saying I threatened him when I just wanted to talk to him. I have no ill intention. She also posted a video. If you wanted to talk to him, there's these things called direct messages, pal. And what you do, right, is you click on the person, and there's usually a little envelope. And an envelope is an old form of communication. It's a, it's a rectangle, usually with little, like, um, usually, like, little chevron down there. And that was an envelope. And that symbol is generally still used nowadays for direct messages. What you do is you click on that, and then you go into his DMs, and you go, hey, I would like to talk to you about everything going on. Can we, you know, can we meet somewhere? If you're if you're nearby, it's like, can we meet somewhere? Or it's like, hey, can we, like, schedule a time where we can do, like, a Discord call or something like that? You don't go to the guy's house, post it on for your tens of millions of followers as actual house, you fucking moron. This guy's entire channel 
is just me, me, me. Every single video for the past few months has been about me. And it's just like on me. And then his streams. This Why do you have two phones? It's fucking weird, man. Or is it weird? Is it normal nowadays to have two phones? I feel like it's weird. Let me know down below, but I'm pretty sure it's still weird. This dude is just like Loki harassing me. Like, should I get a restraining order? Jack then replying to all this and saying she ends with, should I get a restraining order? Well, one of us showed up to the other's house tonight and it wasn't me. And saying the harassing yeah. you claim I've been doing is documenting recent examples of you stealing creators' content, stealing jokes, and failing to provide transformative commentary. Obviously, it struck a nerve, but wow, doxing me was not on my bingo card. There is no reality where you're in the bingo right card. Regarding the claim that right. he doesn't even know how to dox, he said, you posted a video tonight of you outside our home for your 5 million plus followers to see while my wife and I were inside. I can't make it any simpler than that. If that's not doxing, why did you delete it? And all of this has unsurprisingly spawned tons of responses online. A few defending her, but largely it seems like people are on Jack's side. And saying things like her saying, I found his address on Google was nothing more than a thinly veiled attempt to tell her audience, here's where you can find the information. Sniper Wolf is going to get somebody hurt. As well as, I don't care if you're a fan of Sniper Wolf or not, Jack did not deserve to be doxed over what amounts to YouTube drama. Fuck out of here, man. And personally, my opinion here, I used the words in the beginning. I think this is disgusting, it is dangerous, and it is reckless. This is just something you you do not do this crosses a line in my opinion yeah. when she says there was no ill intent i just wanted to talk that sounds like bullshit to me or you just want to talk dm you posted all this including <laughs> he said it. of his home <laughs> publicly at the very least this was an intimidation tactic at the very worst you were hoping that something escalates and her posting after all the big reactions to her story like joking about the incident saying we show up to your house what do you do i feel like that shows she really doesn't understand what she did was fucked no. up also that she likely doesn't expect to be held accountable which is a big aspect of the story because not only did Jack and others online say she needs to be deplatformed, but that was something that Jack reiterated in a video that he uploaded to YouTube. But here's the thing, and YouTube, feel free to prove me wrong. I am 99.5% sure YouTube's not going to do a fucking thing. And as far as no. why, it's because she's one of their golden creators. She was even their keynote speaker at VidCon and they were gushing about her on Twitter. And the truth is, this has gotten to such a point, they can't claim, oh, we didn't see it. And so understand, if there is, as I expect, a lack of an action, that is an action. When you don't send a message, that is a message. Yeah. Unfortunately, the one that YouTube may be sending here is a dangerous one. But hey. Uh... It is. As long as you're big enough, you get to do whatever you want. As long as you make them enough money, they'll be like, ah, who cares? Like, fuck all those other people. Uh, we don't care if you've been here a long time because the friend I think said he was on like 17 years or something like that. That uh, Jack guy. Who cares that you've been a long, like here for a long time making us consistent money through those years? No, no, no. This random ass chick that's a fucking... Psychopath? I always get those two confused. I always get psycho and sociopath confused. I think sociopaths are the CEOs, psychopaths are the murderers and crazy people. I'm going to say psychopath. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry, I apologize. It's like the whole entomology, etymology thing. I, those, those words, I get confused. Anyway, the psychopath, she goes and does all that stuff, and she, fucking posting up on her Instagram is like, Oh, ha, 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 I'm coming to your people's houses. Ha, 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 what do you do? Uh, idiocy. And people are going to defend her, um, honestly. Uh, it's good that a lot of people are defending him in this case, because most of the time it's usually always defending the chick, which is really weird. But good that defending him, and but people are going to go like, oh, she did nothing wrong. You know, he started by calling out her bullshit, so we're going to be on her side. And those people just need a fucking reality check. And so for the whole YouTube drama thing, I don't understand why. I know it. Okay, so I guess I guess I technically do know why. I know it gets views. I know it gets clicks, and I know it gets engagement and stuff like that. But I don't see the point in doing drama. Like, what the flying fuck? That is the story. Some of my personal opinion. And now I pass the question off to you. Whether you agree or you disagree with me, what are your thoughts here and why? And then she over should the weekend, definitely we saw be deep a lot happen between Gaza and Israel. Giving a quick update to oh, the numbers, fuck. we have the total number of dead across both sides now in the thousands, with more than 1,400 Israelis and at least 2,750 Palestinians killed. And what's concerning is that number is already high, and there hasn't even been a ground invasion yet. There's also, of course, the risk of the conflict escalating as conflicts have started breaking out in the West Bank. And that's on top of the reports that Israel had targeted the airfields of neighboring countries that it believes Iran is using to bring in arms to groups like Hezbollah. You also had the continued airstrikes into Gaza while rockets flew into Israel. Also, one of the big... Okay, I know... I, <laughs> the, the thing there. I know it's missiles. I know it's bad, but some of those videos of them going look pretty because it's like, like a nice night sky and then you see like the little trails and then 
If you didn't know, it could also almost look like fireworks going off, but then unfortunately we do know it's missiles. But it's, you know, I just... Yeah, I don't know where I was going with that, honestly. The biggest developments was the announcement by Israel that for about half a day, there would be a safe passage corridor into southern Gaza. However, even that ended up causing issues. There were claims that Israel ended up targeting the corridor anyways, while on the other side, Hamas was accused of blocking it off and setting off explosives to stop it. But either way, it was horrible for everyday Gazans who were just trying to get out of the northern part of the territory where the worst fighting is expected to happen. Though that said, there are some efforts to relieve them. With yesterday, U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken telling reporters, Rafa will be open, adding we're putting in place with the United Nations, with Egypt, with Israel, with others, the mechanism by which to get the assistance in and to get it to the people who need it. And notably, this opening would allow humanitarian aid to be sent to Gaza from Egypt and let the roughly 500 to 600 American citizens living in Gaza out, alongside many others with foreign passports. And on top of this, Egypt and the U.S. agreed that there would be a temporary ceasefire to make this happen. Except, of course, there was one big issue. You kind of need Israel and Hamas to also agree, and neither did. With Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's office issuing a statement this morning that no such ceasefire has taken place. And that was shortly followed by Egypt saying that no aid has managed to get through. Though you also have Israel at least saying that a safe passage corridor would continue to exist to try and let Gazans get to the south. And as far as the online conversations, uh, this continues to be an extremely polarizing situation. With there being a range of opinions and claims like this is a genocide by Israel or that Hamas was solely to blame for outsized death tolls because it was using civilian residential areas to launch attacks. But with all this, the reactions have not been limited to just the internet. But, I mean, one notable thing was the call by Hamas leadership for a day of rage last Friday, something that actually led to many schools and events being shut down over fears that people or groups would take up that call. Though largely, we ended up just kind of seeing bomb threats and large protests. Though we saw many authorities still being cautious. Why threaten? I don't like understand that. Largely being I never understood that. But also, there have been attacks on people. In Germany, Jewish homes and businesses were targeted with many shops getting their windows smashed in and Stars of David being painted on doors, which is a clear callback to the 1930s when the Nazi party encouraged things like that. Meanwhile, in London, a man arrived at a pro-Palestine rally to carry an Israeli flag and was attacked for it before police managed to intervene. Which, on that note, many pro-Palestine protests across the world have been absolutely massive. I also want to make sure to mention that there have been extremely violent reactions too. In northern France, a teacher was stabbed to death and three others injured in what authorities are calling a terror attack, with the attacker reportedly being a 20-year-old Russian man from one of Russia's majority Muslim republics. And then possibly one of the worst examples of how this conflict has spilled over is what happened in Chicago, with it being reported that a young six-year-old Palestinian-American boy was killed after Why? a landlord barged into his family home, murdered him with a knife, and severely wounded his mother. Police right now are treating this as a hate crime. And this young boy's death has gotten a no lot of even President Biden talking about it this weekend and saying, The child's Palestinian Muslim family came to America seeking what we all seek, a refuge to live, learn, and pray in peace. And saying, This horrific act of hate has no place in America and stands against our fundamental values. Freedom from fear for how we pray, what we believe, and who we are. And it's because of the threats... I feel like that's not American values anymore. Um, just before I continue this on, I do want to... Oh, it's actually almost done. Shit. No, it's incidents like this that agencies all over the U.S. and world, really, are on edge right now. Especially as there is a real fear that these will hardly be the last kinds of things we see. And then... In entertain um... Yeah, no, it, it's it's fucked up. Uh, like I said in last week's videos, the whole religion thing should be abolished because most of this is on religion. I don't know the entire story between Palestine and Israel, but from what he has said, Hamas came in, attacked some civilian um, border towns, killed a whole bunch of people, attacked a music festival, killed a whole bunch of foreigners and stuff like that. And then Israel's like, yo, you just came and did all this work on retaliate. And Hamas is like, haha, you're not going to retaliate because we're in Gaza and Gaza's full of innocent people. And Israel is like, yeah, but I mean, unfortunately, we got to. Like, if you keep doing this, you're just going to keep attacking us and stuff like that. We got to, we're going to try to missile only your area, but unfortunately, you know, um... Which is a really simplified version of what happened. But anyway, so I don't know the entire story of what this says. So people that are going, hey, good, they went to Israel. Yeah, awesome. Or it's like, yeah, cool, Israel actually attacked them. I don't care about all that stuff. People need to calm the fuck down. And they need to stop all this bullshit. Because ultimately, countries go and fight each other all the time. And for a little bit of land, it's stupid. But this all boils down to a religious issue. In which case, like I said, abolish religion. All right? Get rid of this issue. I don't care if Israel started first. I don't care if Palestine started first. I don't care. All that stuff. Once you attack civilians, you're the bad guy. So right now, Hamas is the bad guy. Them staying in Gaza to keep attacking Israel when they know there's Gazans in, in, innocent Gazans in there. Hamas is the bad guy. that And people should not be going, yeah, woo, good, yeah, good on them. 
No. Okay? It's so innocent civilians were killed. That is not a good thing, no matter which side you are on. Okay? Yes, Israel should be w watching how they, you know, missile in so they don't kill innocent Gazans, but unfortunately, they're not. They should probably send in their military, but... But one thing I do want to know is there, Mossad is supposed to be their intelligence um, agency and stuff like that. How do they not know that attack was happening? Like, you'd think they would have had... Because they would have had to be in plan, right? They would have had to have Hamas go, like, all right, we're going to hit here, 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 and here, or, like, we're going to push up to this area and stuff like that. So you'd think they would have had a plan and everything. And don't let this... People are going to say, oh, so you're pro-Israel. No, no, no. I'm pro-non-stupid thing. Um, and right now, this entire war in in the in the area is just stupid, just utterly stupid. Payment and drama news. We got to talk about this Dylan Danis Logan Paul Nina Agdal situation. Because it finally oh, happened after months and months of just shit talking and slut shaming. Dylan Danis finally entered the ring and fought Logan Paul. Though notably not before he cut Logan's face with a microphone in a promotional event before the fight. And while in the fight, Logan easily handled Dylan all six rounds. It technically ended in the sixth round with a few seconds left via disqualification. And that's because in addition to things earlier in the fight, like Dylan lying on the ground and showing Logan where he wants it, later on in the fight, once he had done such a terrible job the crowd had actually turned against him and in favor of logan for the most part he decided to try to do some jujitsu on logan which also was embarrassing because he failed both times one time it just looked like he was trying to top logan off in the middle of the ring and then the last time he just ended up like falling or getting thrown to the ground and almost getting hit with a hammer fist in his face at which point security then flooded the ring dylan i guess wanted to also try and fight a security guard which i guess that's what he was saving his punches for and so as places like cbs sports explain paul was moments away from unanimous decision win before danis's shenanigans forced to disqualification. Well, most outlets said basically the same thing. CBS went even further and said it was barely more competitive than if Logan had fought a punching bag. Saying Dylan was <laughs> all misfit, no boxing. And Twitter has largely agreed. Though, of course, none of that has stopped Dylan from talking shit online. Continuing of course not. to slut shame Nina, also saying he's appealing the disqualification. But in general, you know, it was all just kind of clown behavior. And personally, the only thing I kind of wonder at this point is I wonder if it's if it's a boxing match. No, you doing MMA is no. Like, don't be an idiot, you fuck. The entire thing, also, I find barbaric and stupid and should not be allowed. Like, what's the point of punching people? Like, do something better. How much money he made Logan Paul. I'm so interested what the pay-per-view number is going to be because, you know, uh, Dylan, I guess, got a flat fee and Logan gets back end points. But also, on, on the previous note of there being an appeal, YouTuber KSI also said he's going to be appealing the decision right? because he fought boxer Tommy Fury and it was it was close. Some have described it as a robbery. I would say if it's not a robbery, it was... It, I, d I didn't agree with the, de the decision. Personally, based off of how things looked and also the numbers, I thought KSI won the first three rounds. Tommy got the last three rounds, but also... So Tommy had a point deduction because he kept punching KSI in the back of the head. And so for me, and it turns out many others, I thought KSI won. But also, you know, I'm just some schmuck watching the fight. I'm not a professional judge. And so I also kind of think when a YouTuber is going against a professional boxer, you need to think of it as like someone going against the champ. If you even think it's remotely close, you should expect to lose. You often got to make it undeniable or you put their ass on the ground. But hey, if you watch the fights, I'd love to know your thoughts. And then for any of you focused on getting your business off the ground, creating a place to share your homemade goods or Squarespace, I have a great solution for you. And it comes from, and I want to thank the fantastic Go, you realize go uh, easiest and smartest decisions, support. just make sure you enter an offer code. I gotta do that when I get money, actually. Off your first purchase. And then, should we stop categorizing people by race? Yes. That is the question people are asking right now regarding the U.S. Census. Because a growing segment of experts and activists are calling upon the U.S. Census Bureau to stop categorizing people by race. And this because over the past year, they've invited the public to give feedback on potential changes to the 20... Thirty census, including to questions on race and ethnicity. And so Carlos Hoyt, a psychotherapist and author who consults at schools and universities on the topic, is leading an effort to remove or at least reform that section altogether. Right? And his fundamental point is that race, concepts like white, black, Asian, Arab, etc., are not real in any biological sense. And actually, according yeah. to the science, he's 100% right. The overwhelming majority of geneticists agree that racial categories are an extremely weak proxy for genetic variation. And historians have actually noted that the concept of race hasn't always existed, and when it has, it changed repeatedly. You know, some scholars date racism as far back as the ancient world World, while others claim it actually is a modern or a late medieval invention. But you see at least most agree that okay, I was wrong about scientific the racism or more accurately pseudoscientific racism took off in the 18th century. Right, that being oh, the use of not. supposedly scientific methods to divide people into distinct races. With the idea being used to justify slavery, colonialism, war, genocide, and all that stuff. But for nearly just as long, and especially since the early 20th century, thinkers have pushed back against the pseudoscience. The figures like W.E.B. Um, I see a thing where 
um, I can't remember where it was, but the guy was saying something about yeah, right. Like race, race isn't a thing, right? Because it's there's no. It, yeah. Anyway, um, but technically, tr if we're gonna keep the whole like racing around transracialism, I think that, I think that's the right word, is technically correct and would make more sense than anything going on with all the. Um, identify as whatever, like deer and whatever else it is out there. Um, because there is, you know, there's like such a muddle of the DNA and um, ethnicity and stuff like that. If you go, you're like, hey, you know, case in point, it's um, somebody from North America has both uh, Indian DNA and then some kind of European DNA, right? They could either go, hey, I, I you know, I'm actually, you know, I want to take more place in the Indian part, or it's like, hey, no, I want to take more place in the whatever European or other countries, um, races, like heritage and everything like that, which I, I thought was interesting, and I've wanted to delve more into that, and I forgot, and that just reminded me I should probably do that. Of boys and friends, Boaz arguing that race is just a social construct. And over the next several decades, developments in genetics, biology, anthropology, and other disciplines increasingly cast doubt on the concept. That is, until 2003, with the completion of the Human Genome Project, and that really put the final nail in the coffin. And so now, people like Hoyt argue that the rest of society needs to catch up to the scientific community and begin phasing out race from our vocabulary. But also, unsurprisingly, that proposal has provoked a lot of resistance. Right? You see of many left leaning people accusing people like Hoyt of claiming to be colorblind, basically denying that race has any effect on himself or the world. But there, he counters that there is a difference between being race blind and being racism blind. Right? One recognizes that race itself isn't real, the other denies the existence of racism. Though notably, critics argue that there actually isn't much of a difference. Right? Because even though race isn't biological, we live in a world where it does matter, and there's no escaping that. Right? If someone walked up to you and they were like, the only race I see is the human race, you're like, shut the fuck up. There are different <laughs> lived realities just based off of things like the color of our skin. And even if race is a social construct, guess what? You live in a society. One where it plays a factor, and so you should keep that in mind. But also with this, a sense is yeah, but one could also make the argument that if we phase out the whole, there's no race, everything like that, it's just a human race, there's no individual stuff like that, we could potentially phase out the whole racism, because then people might actually start, uh, I was going to say start getting smarter, but concerning how society is nowadays. Anyway, in a smart world, we could phase that out and people would just be like, okay, you know, that's fine, and stop being fucking... It's like, oh, your skin color is slightly darker, you're whatever. Or it's like, oh, it's slightly lighter, oh, you're, you know, you got all this privilege and shit like that. So, stop. Bureau isn't the only institution that critics are going after. Right? I mean, popular ancestry services like 23andMe have been criticized for creating the illusion that race is somehow genetic. With critics arguing that even though it's often used to dunk on white supremacists by exposing their supposedly African DNA, that arguably still reinforces the assumption that race is real. But also you have people saying, hey, what about medical institutions? Where they often ask you to fill out your race or ethnicity on patient intake forms, isn't that for a reason? But reportedly when clinicians do that, they're really just using race as an imperfect proxy for other factors that may correlate with certain health outcomes. Which is why you have critics saying that it creates this loop where doctors import pseudoscientific categories into their practice. And then people use that as evidence that those categories are backed by actual science. Or for example, tons of people believe that sickle cell anemia is a black disease, but that's actually not true. Right? Well, broadly, African Americans are more likely to have it. Some African populations don't share that trait, and some in Europe and Asia do. So instead of being a product of race, the disease is actually linked to areas that have high rates of malaria. But then, if you use a different example, like uh, college admission forms before the Supreme Court upended affirmative action back in June, things get kind of sticky. Because there, you have supporters of racial categories arguing that without them, we wouldn't be able to identify systemic discrimination. And so coming back to the census, that's one argument people give for keeping race on it in 2030. Right? That no. data is used to devise and fund policy. Okay, the whole um, affirmative action thing is absolute bullshit. The whole, oh, we gotta have X amount of, like, Asian Americans, a whole bunch of African Americans, a whole bunch of, like, what else? No! That is absolute bullshit. Anybody that argues for it is an absolute fucking moron. You should be getting into these places based on your, like, grades and the ability to actually do that. So, like, Harvard, right? It's like, oh, I want to be a lawyer. Okay, cool. Do you have the grades for it? Do you have the aptitude for it? Do you have, have all this stuff for it? If you don't, then don't get into it, because Harvard is, is a prestigious area, right? It shouldn't be like, oh, yeah, you know, this 
one person got all the grades, their like perfect scores and everything like that that they needed for it, they should get in. But unfortunately, we do need a certain balance between you know skin colors and stuff like that. So we're just going to allow this other person that you know is a, a, a diversity bring, bringing in just because we have to have this balance. Like, no, if it so happens that it's a whole bunch of like Asian Americans that get into it. Okay, cool. Harvard's going to be a whole bunch of Asian Americans at that time. That just means that the other races have to then actually start doing better. I'm using fucking Asian Americans because the stereotype is the f they're fucking smart and everything like that. Don't at me, okay? I'm trying to keep this as... Yeah. So the whole, like, all that stuff. And if people are like, oh, well, if you can tell by the name, then that's an issue that you have to have with these institutions that this is an issue that you have that you have to fix it within institutions like just by doing the diversity hires and forcing them to do like x amount of stuff like that that's not fixing anything that is putting a band-aid on a goddamn amputated arm it's not doing shit you need to find out who is being discriminatory towards these people then you have to go okay you're out of here bring someone in that will go okay these scores are good except these scores are good except these scores are bad no and like and no nepotism or anything like that. Like the whole like, oh well, my mom and dad have been in this, was in this school, so I get to come in. No, if you do not meet the criteria to get into the school, you should not be in. I don't care how much your mommy and daddy freaking donate to the school. The school is supposed to be prestigious for a reason. It got prestigious for a reason. You getting in there with your like D grades just because mommy and daddy gave a whole bunch of money is absolutely bullshit, and it should not be allowed. Slight little rant on that and programs and to monitor compliance with anti-discrimination laws like for example challenging racially gerrymandered congressional districts but there you'd wait proposing a solution to this in a meeting with census bureau officials back in may with them creating a mock census form that instead of asking people to declare their race ask how is this person racialized and there you have two columns of boxes one marked by self and one marked by others but all that said personally i will say i think as long as systemic and full-blown racism is a thing i think we do need to be mindful of race even if it is a social construct that way we can try to deal with it or at least see inequities at the local state and federal levels but also i, I want to pair that with that is just my opinion based off of my lived experiences how i see things out there and this is a deeply complex and divisive topic so i also want to hear from you whether you agree or you disagree with me and then we saw a no um it should be gotten rid of from all like their senses and stuff like that i understand because it is a social thing it is going to be part of social society and ingrained but we can also stop that in the it from being ingrained it won't happen in our lifetime but we can slowly start to phase it out especially if we phase it out from keeping in like official things like the whole uh census and everything like that get rid of it boom bam done it is hey you're an american that's what you are i don't care if you have you know like more olive skin from the mediterranean or more black skin because you have ancestors from closer ancestors to america or if you have like slight I guess technically it'd be olive skin as well, because you have um, some like South American ancestors, stuff like that. You are born in America, you are American, right? You're born in Canada, you are Canadian. That is how it works. I'm tired of these people are like, oh, we're black American or black Canadian. It's like, no, 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 no. You were born here, that is what you are, right? Most of the people that are African American aren't. <laughs> They're not. They've been, their family has been here since like the founding of america it's like at that point you're not african american you're just black that's all you are you just you have dark skin that's you're a dark-skinned american it is the people that are actually coming from now from africa coming over and they're like we're african but we want to become american that is where the whole african-american should be you don't see freaking people running around going, yeah, I'm Scottish Canadian or Scottish American or Irish American. It's like, no, you don't see that for a reason. It's like they just go fucking, all right, you're Canadian, you're American. It's fucking stupid, man. A huge it's a lot of rants today. In Eastern Europe this weekend, with centrist and progressive opposition parties in Poland poised to win big in elections. And if they can work out a deal together, they can topple the current nationalist government. And Donald Tusk, a former prime minister and head of one of the centrist parties, absolutely ecstatic about the wins, proclaiming, We did it. We really did. This is the end of this bad time. This is the end of PIS rule. And that rule has definitely been controversial. Right? I mean, we've talked about it a few times over the years, but the PIS run Polish government has increasingly passed controversial legislation, much to the annoyance of the EU. Things 
like restrictions on abortions or establishing LGBT free zones. I mean, it even led to the EU cutting off funding to Poland over those issues. And so because of stuff like that, many Poles consider this to be the most consequential election since their independence from the USSR. And that definitely showed in their turnout numbers with 73% coming out to vote, which was also the highest since the end of communist rule. But a very important key takeaway is that even if a coalition government is formed, it doesn't mean that conservative politics still aren't popular there. Because right? the PIS still won probably like 200 out of the 438 seats. So as a single entity, they are still the biggest party. Also, I say probably because the official count isn't done until tomorrow. And that's without mentioning the, the way Poland allocates seats. It's a complicated mess based on proportional amounts of votes and passing a certain threshold. So technically, we won't know for sure, for sure until tomorrow. But right now, everyone is treating the tentative results as the likely outcome. Also, important to note, domestically, this could signal a big shift for Poland, but also internationally, some major things are unlikely to change. Right, With one of them being Poland's biggest international concern right now being Russia and the ongoing war in Ukraine. Considering Poland's long animosity towards Russia due to multiple invasions, it's unlikely they'll change their stance to suddenly become pro-Russia. So for partners like Ukraine, at least that'll remain a constant. And then, let's talk about yesterday, today. We Nothing much I can say about that, honestly. There was, it's literally just Poland changing from conservative, I guess, to a liberal. That's, oh, okay, that's not much. Um, just really say there. Other than that, yeah, that's about it. There's a lot of rants today, and I apologize for that. Um, and hopefully I articulated correctly. I did have to get better at that, the articulation. Uh, articulation? Yeah. Uh, so it should be interesting as I do this morning. But anyway, we are going to be ending there there. Because I don't do the whole reacting to the reactions. This seems a little weird. Uh... Yeah, no, it's fucked up. The whole sniper thing, she definitely has to be like, all right, here's the very, 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 very least. She should have a, like, month, maybe more ban from social media. Uh, but they're not going to do that because that would send the message that they actually care about the safety of other people, and they don't. Um, the whole fighting thing, there's no reason why uh, they should be allowed to... Um, challenge the ruling. If he switched to freaking MMA in the middle of a boxing, yeah, of course he should be disqualified. Uh, get out of here. Um, and then, yeah, race should be definitely... The race box should be um, taken away. To a degree, maybe ethnicity, but once again, that just becomes muddled like races. Um, in which case, it's like, meh. Like, also, I know people might... This might rub people the wrong way, but who cares what your race is? Just, you live in this area, this is what you do. Like, nah. Like, I don't know. It's just mine, I guess, because of where I live. It doesn't, yeah. But it's, I, 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 don't, I don't see the point. Like, who cares if, like, why do the people need to know what your race is when you're living in a certain area? It's, right? it's just... Okay, there's a thousand people living here, ten thousand people living here, five thousand people living here. That's it. It's just people living, x amount of people living, and you adjust it accordingly, right? Like you need more hospitals in the ten thousand area than the one thousand area because they have less people and stuff like that. You need more like schools that in the ten thousand and the five thousand and all that fun stuff. But I mean, hey, that might be naivete because anyway. Anyway, yeah, we're going to do there. Um, follow me across all social media. Appreciate you guys stopping by here. I'm a res across it all. Twitter, TikTok, Instagram. Yes, I'm still calling it Twitter. It's fucking Twitter. I'm not calling it X. Musk, if you want... Oh, God, never mind. I can't get into that one. Um, if you guys want to come talk with me live, I am on Twitch. Come talk with me live, and I can answer your stuff live, or we can just shoot the shit. Well, I play games and everything like that. Um, yeah, that's about it. Remember to remember all subscribes and likes do help power the wand. Even when it's fixed, it helps power the wand, so I can do funky stuff and stuff like that. That's why there's no no weird um, effects or anything like that. It's because the wand's broke and the wand causes all that. So, um, but yeah, I will see you guys all later. Remember to stay safe, stay healthy, stay awesome, because you guys are all awesome. Bye bye.